Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Create Your Life series, where we help you maximize your potential and results in the area of personal development, entrepreneurship, and travel. And I'm your host, Kevin Y. Brown. Create your life. Create ta propre vie. Create your life. Create your life. Create your life. Create la tua vita. Create your life. Don't skip your life. You better create your life. <laughs> create your life. Create la vie. Create your life. Create your life. Beautiful people, what's going on? This is the Create Your Life series, and I am your host, Kevin Y. Brown. And today we are joined in the studio with a magnificent guest, uh, Chris Alvarez, the CEO of Transcendent Enterprise. Chris, please say hello to the Create Your Life series family. Hey, family, how are you doing? Um, um, I just want to take some time here. I'm about to cut you off, Kevin. I'm sorry. Just want to just uh, take a moment, take a break, and, and pause and kind of really say some things. Okay. I appreciate being here. Absolutely. Definitely experience. Um, I think things sometimes go so fast and I'm going like 100 miles per hour. We have a relationship and I think it's one of those things where, um, you know, just a few seconds right before we started, I was like, I just I, I want to mention, you know, how much I appreciate knowing you. Guys. It's amazing seeing you kind of coming right from California here and settling, getting all this stuff going. It's, it's a beautiful movie. And I think since my, I'm having my movie sometime, I'm just realizing, like, wow, this, this guy's doing it. And this guy's making things happen. And I just wanted to say that I'm proud to be here. And I'm proud to just uh, try to take advantage of this moment. Wow. Man, Chris, I, I appreciate you saying that. That's actually very humbling. And, you know, I don't want to go and, and steal your, your time on air, but Create Your Life Series, fam, I got to be honest with you. I wouldn't even be in New York City if it wasn't for Chris. Chris, when I was coming up from Atlanta to do my auditions at MTV, I was actually sleeping on Chris's couch uh, multiple times when I was coming up to do my auditions. And he's the one who really uh, encouraged me to to move to New York. So again, you know, without this guy here, I wouldn't be here. But Chris, Transcendent Enterprise. Yes. What is Transcendent Enterprise? Please uh, tell the family. Transcendent Enterprise is a it's a video production company. Uh, we work with individuals of all companies, corporations, helping to develop uh, high quality content. And uh, you know, we really love what we do. We're very passionate, and we we want to see you win. So you know, when you when you work with us. We want to see you transcend. We want to see you win. And, and that's what we're all about. We really give our heart, my whole team, uh, to uh, the people that work with us and uh, of trying to make their, your vision um, as, as best as possible. Okay. Well, Chris, um, I've actually, I've personally seen your company grow, but tell us about some of the, the people that you've had the opp- opportunity to, to work with, you know, on your journey. Uh, we worked with, uh, it's interesting, I mean, starting the company and, and uh, when I first grabbed the camera, I realized whatever I record will be somewhat interesting. And, and I remember, you know, it's one of those, I remember that, that time, I think it was like $5,000, you know, my first camera, I just was like, this camera's going to take me to, a, you know, through a certain journey. And uh, it has, um, you know, I was very, very fortunate to, you know, basically um, be able to sit and watch, uh, you know, a celebrity and then, right next day uh, recording them. Um, and uh, I've worked with many people from like a Tavis Smiley to a Rick Ross um, to, uh, you know, Nelly, Little Wayne, uh, worked with a lot of great companies, Universal, Sony. Uh, and, I, you know, I do a lot of work with schools, you know, from NYU to Stanford, Harvard, Columbus, Columbia. Um, I've been, uh, it's, it's one of the things that, I mean, it's, just, it's so many people um, that I've, I've done a lot of work with, and I'm, I'm very fortunate that I'm able to um, be in a room and be able to rub shoulders with those particular people. Okay, so how did you get your start in uh, TV and film? Is like this an area that you always focused on, or did you 
How did you get started? Like, when did you realize that this camera, that this was for you? I actually really got started at 15 years old at my church, right in Harlem, Mori Baptist Church. Uh, they, you know, the, the, you know, Pastor Preston R. Washington invested, you know, into the church and putting a, a you know, one, they were one of the first churches with a $100,000 studio. And uh, maybe about a couple of weeks after they, they put it there, um, I grabbed all the manuals. I was 15 years old, very, very, um, very eager to learn. Um, grabbed all the manuals and, you know, read everything on this, all this complicated stuff. I don't know how I broke it down, but some, it, for some reason, it honestly kind of came a little natural to me. Like I would look at it, it came naturally. And uh, from there, I basically, you know, understood I had some sort of purpose and, 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 and passion, you know, at 15 with working with, you know, media. Um, so from there, uh, I worked at the church all throughout through, through college and um, I played the drums too. That was also very fun. Um, <laughs> but I worked, I worked at the church and um, from there at college, uh, you know, I was in school studying to be an engineer and uh, it felt a little uncomfortable. It didn't feel as natural as, you know, uh, working in the media was. I wanted, you know, I, I knew my first intuition of of kind of even going to college. And I think people get caught up in this scenario all the time when you uh, you you go to college. You know, you might do something. You might be a singer. Or you might be uh, a musician. And you, you then you you know step. You think you got to step into the real world and and uh, and uh, you know pursue something like an engineer or a doctor. And I mean that's the same kind of momentum I had. I was going to school, becoming an engineer, and and uh, I you know. My first initiative was to, you know, work in, and I want to, you know, I want to make money. I want to make money to bring money in my family. Okay. And um, from there, I, um, I was studying the people I saw making money with people in the finance industry. Okay. And then the the people in the finance industry worked at, you know, companies like Goldman Sachs. Uh, uh, it was a, it's a technology company right across from the school. Also, that I don't remember the top of my head, but you know, a lot of top students stuff work with for for the um, for the finance companies like Citibank, um, Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley. So you know, I was I was taking that approach, pr- yeah, approach in that breath to try to shift to to get in that area, and um, I uh, did a you know it was one year I was I was doing a lot of school my grades weren't the best I think I had like a two point eight you know two point seven GPA it wasn't the best but my extra activity my extracurricular activities and my presence on campus was extra you know ordinary you know I, I think I was you know pretty much well respected I worked really hard at the school uh, you know so I thought you know I, I went to career service one day they set up a couple of interviews for me to work at a couple of uh, the companies and it was finance one, companies right finance companies yeah okay. so it was one interview particular that I really thought I, I I was definitely guaranteed to have something it was a interview with uh Citibank for for a certain program um it was a student prior the year prior that kind of got that same position and I was in the same same track as him you know so it was I, you know I thought it was automatic that I was going to get it and I went into the interview and the lady asked me, you know, we sat there, she, you know, I was, I was a little nervous, but I've done interviews before. I was, you know, I'm pretty confident. And um, she sat there and asked me, you know, we had a, a school presentation. Uh, who were the people at the presentation? And for some reason, at that very moment, prior to the interview, I was saying to myself, I hope that's the question she don't ask me because I don't remember. And I remember being in the presentation, trying to see their names to write it down. And I couldn't even see it because it was so far away or something like that. I didn't, you know, and I didn't think I was like, can it not really be that serious that, you know, that can really hurt me? I didn't take it as serious. I didn't make it that much of a priority. And then when she asked me that, I, I literally froze. Um, I couldn't come back. I just froze. I was just like, this is some BS. Is she really asking me that? Is that really of value? And I, I guess at the time, I mean, everything had this politics. I guess it, it did might have value. And then from that point, on, I was just like, oh, this is not for me. I can't be, you know, interviewing having to like, I guess, shift myself to some other culture. You know, I just, I just didn't believe that was for me. You know, I think I get in those positions all the time where I'm just like, ah, that's not for me. I gotta, I gotta go do it myself or I gotta, you know, I'd rather, you know, I'd rather, you know, one of those things where you, I'd rather die 
by myself in that situation than be with a whole bunch of people I don't want to be with. Okay, so you, you basically, because what it sounded like to me is at first, initially, you were chasing the money. Yeah. Right? And then, so you decided that, you know, you had this interview and then things weren't necessarily um, for you. Yeah. So you decided to go on your own path, which we, around here we call that, you decided to start investing in yourself and creating the life that you want and that you dreamed of yourself. Yeah. Hence to create your life series. Yeah. So that being said, what, did, what happened next? Oh, hold on, stop real quick. You're from New York, right? Yes. What part of New York are you from? I'm from Queens. Okay, and you went to which college? I went to Polytech that just got currently bought by NYU, and now it's called NYU Tandon. So I'm going to refer to it as NYU Tandon. Okay. But the reason why I ask that is because, you know, on the Create Your Life series, we have a lot of trailblazers like yourself, and, and you're a CEO, you're yeah. running a, a successful production company, but there's oftentimes different uh, educational levels that other, that we have, you yeah, know, okay. and so... Our, our, us creating our life is not actually dictated by the amount of degrees that we have, but more so by the effort. So I like to highlight that. Yeah, I, I 100% agree with that effort. Um, definitely, you could do anything. You don't need that school behind you. Sorry, you know, we were in the school. Sorry to disrespect the school. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, uh, you know, 90% of it is showing up. You know, and yeah. of course, preparation, you need to be prepared because success is when preparation meets opportunity. Yeah. But I, so after the interview, um, with the finance company, you decided to create your life and go in your own direction, follow your own instincts. What what, what was next? So yeah, I took a, uh, I made a, a couple steps. It was a lot of things I feel like I've kind of done. Um, you know, one I definitely, uh, you know, kind of made sure my circle was tight. And I think a lot of the relationships I developed with, uh, so, you know, some of my, you know, the friends I have today, you, you know, Mike Gray, um, I still have today. You know, I developed those relationships in order to. Uh, I guess, you know, more motivate me, keep me straight. You know, I think we're all, mm-hmm. on the, all on the same page. You know, all three of us have actually have the same business. Um, um, and um, that was one, you know, that's one part. And from, you know, another part was I started reading a lot of books. My whole thing was I'm going to figure out how, you know, others do it. The, you know, the Warren Buffett's. Uh, you know, at the time, uh, this might sound messed up too, at the time, Donald Trump. <laughs> um, okay. So just reading how uh, how these guys acquired their wealth, um, and um, you know what I've I've came to the conclusion that a lot of these people, you know, they they, t- they value their time, and what that means is they don't they don't um, they don't look at time as something that it could be wasted. Um, so they strategically put themselves in position to uh, accomplish something at a high percentage rate. Okay, can you break that down a little further for? Us? So I think, uh, so that's, I mean, so I think what happens is, you know, somebody might say, and, and so I interviewed Fat Joe one time, and, I, and this is one of the things I got at Fat Joe. This is probably like 2007 or something. Uh, you know, he said to himself, you know, you know, a lot of people want to be rappers, and he said that, you know, you know, what people have to realize is there's lots of opportunity in the music industry besides rapping. You know, you could be a lawyer, you can. Uh, you could be a promoter, you know, it's a lot of other roles. But he was saying what people don't realize is that when you're a rapper, you see in the NBA, he said when you're in the NBA, you know, what it really looks like, your chances of going to the NBA is you standing in a football field and looking at everybody in that football field, that, you know, whatever, seventy to 100,000 people that could fit in a football stadium. And he said that those people are your competition. So the chances of you becoming a successful NBA player is pretty much that one out of 100,000. Okay. And he said, now, if you want to become a successful rapper and be in, and, and be in a rap game for a long time for it to sustain and, you know, help your family. Absolutely. He said, it's six of those football stadiums. So, um, with that being said, you know, it's one of those things where uh, a long time ago, I was actually in this place, an- you know, another, I would say a little gem or, you know, I would say a little miracle in my life. Something that I heard, uh, it was, uh, I wish I could remember his name. It was a guy running for the mayor. He's in Brooklyn. He's like a, a council person in Brooklyn. And he he said at a Nesby conference, um, you know, I was very active with Nesby. Nesby helped me a lot. And um, Nesby is? Nesby is the National Society of Black Engineers. Okay. Uh, and um, at their conference here at City Tech, and oh, man, so much... Now I've realized it's so much. It was a we had. I mean, it was we were all together, but it was a little bit rivals of who was the better chapter between my school and this school too. But it's, you know, it's all love. 
much love, much respect. This school talking about City College. City College, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, New much, York. Yeah, okay. much respect. I love. It. I mean, I should go to school. I mean, the bills that would be probably paying my student loans right now. So I mean, hey, this man. is a good move. This is a good you place can to be. Encourage people <laughs> to go to Jeffrey College Academy. And, oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Jeffrey College you, Academy. I, yeah, I should have. I should, I should have been. They were. You, I wish you were there around to so talk. <laughs> had those loans paid for, and I had a scholarship too. But that's a whole other story. We're not going to get into that one. Um, <laughs> Okay, so yeah. you're at this conference. So I'm at this conference, and then, uh, you know, he was running to be mayor, and he was saying what, you know, young students have to realize with um, why they should be active in politics is because if he was saying that if, if you had a business, if one of you guys have a business and I'm the mayor, let's say you are selling toilet tissue. If I give you a contract to do sell toilet tissue to every public school in New York City, you're going to be a millionaire. And when he said that, I was like, oh, you know, I, I was like, wow, that's, you know, that kind of opened my mind in the sense of like, you know, there's something else besides, you know, rapping or you know, it's, it's other things to do. Um, so I think that's when I kind of expanded my mind to kind of really step out of, you know, I mean, step out of my culture, step out of where have I been to really kind of understand the full picture as far as how do I really want to approach accomplishing this goal? Okay. And accomplishing the goal of being an entrepreneur or accomplish the goal of... It's interesting because it changed. I mean, I, I think at the one, I think, at, you know, as I said, at one point, um, you know, as I said, another point, I said, miracle part was, uh, uh, you know, my fiance, I met her cousin, Terry, and uh, I think what really put the seed in my mind was, I, I remember meeting him and he was like, I'm trying to put wealth in my family, you know? Okay. You know, and I, 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 you know, I see the Rockefellers and I see the uh, Kennedys and stuff, and I, and I, I thought to myself, just like, yeah, how come you don't know like Alvarez? <laughs> right, right, right. Which is your last name, right? Yeah. yeah. How come there's no Alvarez? Yeah. Okay. So, so I think from there, I put a seed in my mind to say, you know, I really want to um, put, you know, put wealth in my family, put wealth for African American people in the economy, just, you know, be that representation because. You know, I understand, you know, you know, of the country, I understand where everybody's coming from. I understand the lack of opportunity. So it's one of the things, you know, being there to act, kind of advocate. But as I say, it, it, um, as I say, you know, that's that's the foundation. That's definitely the principle. But it, then, it, you know, as you progress, it gets a little bit more complicated um, because a lot of decisions and stuff. So, you know, uh, you just really just got to pursue forward. Okay. So you were saying that you, you had the opportunity to to work with, with Fadger. I want to circle back a little bit and okay. I want to talk more. You talked about your peer group that you created. So how important in your success on your journey is peer group? And then I would also have to ask you, how how do you decide who to pick the phone up for? That's like a big thing to me, you know, like, okay. because sometimes, you know, some people may call, you might not pick up the phone that quick for them, but other people might call and you might be like, all right, I know I have to call them back. So yeah, it's a, it's a real complicated game of going back and forth. I, I, I honestly believe I've been really blessed to have a lot of people around me. Um, I think it's, I don't know if, you know, I, just, I'm, you know I, I consider myself an overall nice guy, but I think it's interesting the the amount of people I have, I feel like it's, that's around me, uh, the people that are around me are, are a true blessing. And I feel like, like I just hear some people's stories and I feel like I don't know where near deal with that kind of situation. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's one part. How? I think the phone, so I, I think, um, how do you avoid, how do you keep your peer group, um, in a way that's encouraging to you? Like, so for those of us out there who might be in the Create Your Life, uh, series fam that might be listening, yeah. who need uh, advice on how to shift maybe their peer group so that they can maximize their potential. I, think, I mean, I think overall, I think, I mean, r- real talk, I think in the sense of, you know, I'm a pretty a boring person and you have to be really kind of mellow. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun stuff I do not do. And I feel like people who are not of it, they don't want to hang around me. <laughs> now, when you're saying fun stuff that you that you're not about, uh, can you elaborate on that? I mean, we need some specifics, specific. man. People okay, out okay, here, details. Need- yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, it's, you know, I, I don't really, I don't really drink. So I mean, so you know, going out and having a drink that's, you know, that's not really my mom. I'm not against it. I'm not really a smoker, so that knocks me out from that. Um, uh, I um. I really like to just be around people who want to talk about how to get this money, how to how to make themselves better, how to master stuff. You know, okay. I'm about to curse right there, but how to master stuff. <laughs> yeah, I know that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. But yeah, I mean, so so if you're not in of the conversation or of the movement of 
uh, you know, in the sense of, of master stuff and becoming better, it's very hard for me to have my energy up. My energy is very low in general. I'm a very low, conserve my energy. People ask me, like, what is wrong with this guy? You know, you know. It's, so if it's some coonery buffoonery, I am just, my energy is going to be super low. And you're going to be like, I can't be around this guy because he's just killing my energy and soul. Because okay. if you talk about how to get some money, some real stuff about how to be, oh, my, my energy is up. Like, how are we going to do this? You know, how are we going to make this happen today? Okay. So stimulation through, uh, through rising, through, through focusing on what's next, what, how it, to become better. Yeah, I think it's really you knowing yourself so well. Mm-hmm. And, and um, you, you um, putting a certain energy out there that attracts or unattract people. Mm. And, and I think I'm just very unattractive to people who may, you know, as I just said, like, who just not about it. I'm very uh-huh. unattractive to that. And people don't, they, they think I'm corny. I'm very corny. Right. But at the same time, you went and you've been running this company. How long have you been running Transcendent? Oh, man, it's been a while. Uh, so I started the company in 2005. I would say like a beta launch, you know. Uh, so 2005, from 2005 to 2000, I think six and a half. I had no office space, and that's the time I was working with uh, Keisha Cole. And, and um, at that time, I was working with um, I was working pretty much as assistant to Manny Haley, and who was her manager at the time. Who was, who was her manager at the time? Um, and so two thousand, so from two thousand five, two thousand six, around there, I was I was starting a business and kind of just trying to figure out what the what am I doing? That's that's you know that's what I was doing. So around more to two thousand six, two thousand seven, I started. You know, I met up with him and then, um, you know, off of a relationship, his wife uh, worked at my school and I kind of harassed her and she got me in. And um, Harassing in a good way, meaning persistent uh, to work with her husband. Yeah, yeah. I came to her maybe every two or three weeks asking her if he's in town, can I work with them? And, um, you know, it's interesting. I mean, I just remember that day. I remember that day I... She said, yeah, he's in town. Meet him here. I met him at BT. When I met him at BT, Chris Brown was like 16, 15 years old. In the in the back room, looking nervous, popping and stuff like that, going about to go on 106 in Park, um, and you know, it was just interesting time. And I, and I met, met Keisha for the first time. She was there, but also too about to go on. And um, so from so from there, um, I got into that so I can understand the, you know, more of the culture of business. How one should talk to you know somebody. How does people really? How are people really cutting deals, making big money? And you know, this how I was really behind the scenes seeing that being done. So from 2007 to about 2000, into 2008, 2009, uh, I got an office at Polytech. They had an incubator program. You know, entrepreneurship began to be really, you know, a big thing in in, um, in universities. They started really supporting students. So I took advantage of that, and. Um, from 2000, I would say, I would say 2007 and a half or 2000, I would say 2008 to 2011, I pretty much, I was still lost. I still consider myself lost. I, I consider myself, in the, I mean, it's not, it's terrible for somebody to refer themselves to them like this, but uh, I was really slow. I was just, you know, I was really slow in the sense of uh, getting my business out there. And uh, I, I just didn't, I don't. I, I don't know. I just didn't. I was, you know, I, I was think, in my. I was just in my own world. I was just. I. I, I didn't. Um. It. You know, it's interesting. I thought about as before I was coming to the show. It's one of those things that I. Uh, like I. I didn't do certain things. I wasn't of the routine. I remember. Uh, you know, at the time, you know, Mike had a different business at the time. Absolutely. And uh, we we were partnered in office, and he. Uh, it took. We wanted to get in the office early, but every time we tried to get in the office, it was eleven o'clock for some reason. And then we get there, it, we, we was exhausted, so we went and got something to eat. We ate, we ate bad food, fried something, then we was tired. So then we went to sleep, took a nap. Then we went, it's like, five, okay, it's ready to go. So it was just like, it was really hard to get into the right momentum and routine. All right, I got I to gotta stop you right there and I got to ask you. Okay, so, <laughs> you know, you're talking about bad food and, and routines, man. How important are routines in uh, entrepreneurship? Oh, do you still eat that same kind of food or what's going on with that? Yeah, I'm a fat boy naturally, so I really, I, I do eat the food, but I'm, I'm trying hard. You know, I'm trying to, you know, you know, you know, what's the word? I always get this backward. You know, eat to live, not live to eat. You know, absolutely. That's very important. But, um, we need you around. But I'm definitely trying to make a significant effort. I understand the implications. That I'm, um, you know, so routine. Routine is essentially extremely important. Um, you, 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 you know, you got to build habits that's going to sharpen your sword. You got to, you, you know, this. So, you know, so with saying that, you know, I, as I said, I would just really 
In the dark, it sounds like. In the the dark and really bad, out of shape as far as becoming, understanding what it looks like to be a business owner. And even still today, I'm still searching for, still searching for that clearly. But I think today it probably looks a bit different than it did in 2007, 2008, correct? It's a little bit clearer. It's definitely a little bit clearer, but I'm, I'm definitely still fighting. Well, to, to, to have it more clear. You know? I think that's one of the biggest things is that, you know, in entrepreneurship, we also, we always uh, have to evolve, especially as business owners, because we're focusing on the grand picture while looking at the different things that are shifting. Please tell us how you, um, how you came out of the dark or what are some of the habits that you used in order to, to get there, to get to where you are today? Yes. Yeah, so you know, I focus on developing a, a routine. Um, one of the things was um, increasing my intellect as far as uh, a business owner. So I had to find out what was the right mindset to to have. And, uh, you know, Google has blessed us with this thing called YouTube. And uh, YouTube, you basically have anybody who's done anything be your mentor. Because all the people who are doing something has content out there that they, they you know, they're basically giving you some insights to how they... Um, Got what they, you know, how they they give, they're giving me some insights on how to become successful. Uh, so I constantly play in the background of my office subliminally every day. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk, I don't know if any, I mean, he's a lot more popular now, but I was definitely aware of him, you know, when he made his first book, Crush It. Uh, Gary V, Casey Neistat, uh, who has a very inspirational story. He's pretty much. Um, transcending the filmmaking industry in the sense of showing you that um, you could really work for yourself and um, really create a brand through YouTube videos by him creating a vlog every day. And he's, you know, taking the YouTube thing to a whole nother level. Um, so I watch all his, I watch his videos every day. Uh, Grant Cardone, who um, is a sales master. And, Absolutely. And, and, um, and, he, and it's not only he's teaching sales, but he's t- showing it how sales should be done in, in the modern 2016 age. And uh, effort. That guy covers a lot about effort and putting in 100% as well. Yes, definitely. You, you actually put me on a Grant Cardone, so I got to be honest. Sell or be sold changed my life. Yeah, so Grant. So, um, so yes, yeah, so I watch a lot of uh, Grant Cardone. And, um, you know, those are the things that I help try to shape my mindset. And, I, I you know, I just currently picked up uh, something uh, I just I was currently watching something recently it's a book I read it was I was doing a program with Stanford um, Stanford has a program to um, pretty much revitalize I mean pretty much uh, put um, help assist Latino business owners um, how to you know increase their business and um, I'm reading a book by a guy named Keith Cunningham um, and Keith Cunningham is just pretty much a uh, successful businessman like and he knows how to look at the numbers which is one of my weak points when i'm working on look at the numbers and really figure out how to adjust your business by looking at the numbers and i'm looking at him now on youtube he has a whole bunch of content on youtube and uh i'm learning a whole different arena and um that's going to be consistently my you know my mo as far as building myself as consistently trying to find people looking at content and building from there, taking advantage of those things. Okay, so you're basically taking just mentorship to a whole new level for yeah. through YouTube. Yeah, virtual mentors. Virtual mentors. Wow, that's powerful. So you, you talked about uh, getting back into habits and yeah. how habits have helped your business. Yeah. How many hours a day do you work? Like, you used to show up to the office at 11. What time do you show up to the office now? I mean, I literally start working. So, I mean, my, so my, 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 my routine is usually this. I, you know, I wake up probably around 6.30 and around 6.45, 7, you know, I'm, you know, depending on what days I'm on the computer, kind of getting my first things done. And then, um, I, you know, fitness is very important when I'm in shape. It's, um, it's, uh, it's tra- it prepares me to work. I can work longer and I can, like, I don't have to worry about carrying equipment upstairs and, and huffing and puffing about and dying. So I need to be sort of in a certain amount of shape. So uh, I'm doing, trying to figure out some exercise thing around 7.30, 8.30. So I'm, you know, I'm in the office around 9. Uh, but being, you know, production person, I have to be flexible. I, mean, I might have a shoot that I have to be somewhere at three in the morning. I might have to be on the West Coast or somewhere by two in the morning, something like that. So, you know, getting up and, you know, going to sleep, waking up, that's like, that's nothing to me. I have no problems waking up or going to sleep anywhere or any place. <laughs> um, so, um, so, you know, so that's one part. Um Okay. So um, when you talked about basically now your business, I'm sure it looks uh, completely different than yeah. what it looked like in 2007, 2008, when you were still working yeah. in, the, in the dark. So now I would have to ask you, like, what were some of the bigger challenges that you faced 
uh, while running your business versus um, versus uh, yeah, what are some of the biggest bigger challenges that you faced? Uh, so yeah, right, to this so, point. so right now, yeah, we we have office in the city. We were in Brooklyn before. We have office city, and we're a seven people, seven persons team, and we have a lot of talent. Um, over the you know over the years, I you know was able to get a lot of talent, and and having the talent that we have um, is really helping the business get to another level. Uh, the work that we're producing is, you know, it's amazing. And I'm, I'm proud of my team to, so, to be able to do that. Um, and um, so right now, it's one of those things I'm, I'm really trying to work on, on, on all aspects of my life, as far as enhancing my vision and working with people to make sure that the vision is being followed. But it's one of those things that my vision is a part of their vision. So it's one of those things that we can literally all transcend together. So I'm, I'm working on really just having a good hindsight on 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 building vision that is appropriate for everyone. Okay. So were there ever any like uh, hard challenges um, while you were getting your business up until this point? And if so, then how did you overcome those? Um, a lot of challenges that I've had. I mean, I, I, you know, paperwork is one challenge. You know, as I said, I'm watching a lot of Keith Cunningham and, you know, he talks about, uh, you know, find you know he he talks about the investment mindset. So that's what I'm trying. I'm working on now, the, building the right mindset for investing. And uh, he says, the, to have the right mindset to invest is boring. You know, going broke is fun. You know, uh, mm, that's deep. So, going broke is fun because you're doing a lot of things that look cool, but they're not necessarily responsible for the business. Is yeah. that what you mean by that? So it's one of the things I'm, I'm you know, I'm, 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 so you know, so doing the paperwork and and really reading the fine print. Um, those are the things I'm trying to get a lot tighter on. I'm working on something simple, which, which I feel like no business owners really talk about payroll. Payroll is very important. Holy crap. Nobody talks about payroll. <laughs> payroll is, you know, I mean, it's great. You have great people. And that's what I'm trying to do best by them. But it's one of those things where it's like, uh, you, you know, you get your clients to pay you and the money goes in the account and then payroll just go take it out and, you know, pay everybody else, which is supposed to happen. But it's like, you know, it's just, it's just one of those things that's a little scary. You just got to just, you know. Absolutely, you got so, so, so it's just uh, yeah. So it's just you know, it's calculating that, taking that um, step by step, and that is you know, it's one of those things. I think I would say um, 2013. I think something that significantly um, improved myself, which in turn turned my business around. You know, I, I really followed the model of uh, you know, you know, walk by faith, not by sight, and uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things that you know you're supposed to go somewhere. So it's, now I just kind of just close my eyes and I just walk. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, I trip, I, but, you know, it's one of those things that I know I have the ability to get back up, so. Okay. Cool. So when you, uh, you've, you've had the opportunity to do these things, if you turn the business around, I want to know, you know, a little bit about the fun stuff, not the stuff that took you mm-hmm. and made you broke, but have you had the opportunity to go film abroad? And if so, where? And, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, um, I've done a, a lot of stuff abroad. You know, I did it, you know, so it's interesting. I, I was, when I first started my business in like 2005, I was courting Nesby as a client, and um, Calvin Young, who was uh, running for mayor for Baltimore, you know Harvard grad, uh, he became chair, and he was an underclassman when I was in um, and attending at the time, and he uh, he gave me the opportunity to do work with Nesby, and uh, so this is about almost about eight, almost ten years later, so that's number one, you need patience. You know, and, and don't true. think don't think you're going to get a client overnight. It's, I'm courting clients now that I know maybe five to ten years down later it's going to be beneficial. So, okay. you, so that's that delayed gratification. Yeah. So so uh, this is it's a part of the game. You just got to respect it. Um. So he hired us to go to this. I mean, he and he played the role in probably one of the most significant uh, what's the word? Significant you know pivotal point of my life, which was I got the chance to go to Africa, the motherland, Ghana. Oh uh, wow. And um, I was able to kind of document Nesby's efforts to, uh, they were going there, uh, working a way to provide assistance in the village with water, electricity. So they were having students that, you know, they were, they want, they're working to create a program to bring students from college to get hands-on experience in improving the communities in Africa. And, uh, you know, we, we went to Africa and then we also uh, interacted with the chapters that they have over there in Ghana. Uh, and, and I was able to, I was fortunate to do this twice. You know, I've, I've been out there twice, you know, with Calvin and then with Sina, who was the, uh, the chair after that. 
Okay, so let me ask you this because I, I feel like we've talked, and you said you had the opportunity to go to Sweden and Lund- in England to yeah. uh, to work as so, well. So far, yeah. Now, for those out there who want to start a business similar to yours, mm-hmm. when you're on the road and you have this opportunity to go to these great places, how do you stay focused? Like, do you have any like uh, tips for staying focused? You know, and making sure that you meet your call times and things like that. Because I mean, this experience could be the distraction thing, uh, like in a sense. Or? It depends. Yeah. Yeah. It I could mean, be. I, th- I, th- I think it's you know my. So at the end of the day, you're there for business. My business is my passion, you know. Um, so, you know, if I'm traveling and I'm doing my work, which I'm passionate about, for some reason, it's very natural. Uh, you know, even though at the time we were at Ghana, we had long days. This guy Calvin could go for hours. You know, we had some long days, you know, but it was <laughs> definitely all worth it. Um so it's one of those things that these, you know, you, you're there where your clients, you have to work, you have a responsibility and, and uh, you definitely have to make sure that you're, you know, maintaining your responsibility because that the, the opportunity to go elsewhere, like I said, I'm, I'm keep making sure my reputation is, uh, uh-huh. you know, as I said, it's one of those things I've, you know, I've been to, um, I've been to Sweden, Malmo, and I've been to uh, London and, you know, if, you know, if I'm messing up here, um, you know, it just kills the opportunities for in the future for me to go to other places. Wow. So I got to make sure I'm, you know, I'm on point. I have to make sure that I'm delivering every time. Absolutely. So protecting your, your life. I always say, you know, one of the biggest things is that the truth is in the details. You know, and so with that, you know, it's always important to be on point because, you know, when you're dotting all of your I's and crossing all of your T's, people are looking for that, trying to make sure that you uh, are as good as you say. So my next question to you is, how do you actually find your clients? And I ask mm-hmm. this for those uh, in the Create Your Life Series family that might be out there and who might be doing something similar to you or want to uh, build like like you have and have come so far. So how do you find your client? So right now, I think anybody who's looking for clients, and I guess it depends on a certain business, but the Internet, understand SEO. Search engine optimization. Uh, How important has that been for you and your business? I think, I mean, I would say the past two or three years, I've started paying a lot more attention to it. And it's, it's the thing that drastically turned the company to help me double my revenue. Wow. So it's one of those things where um, using the internet and trying to figure out how to get people on your website and get people from your website to call you or to reach out to you. Um, that is pretty much my approach, and I'm and I'm planning on revamping because you know you got to study it, and I'm you know I'm studying. I'm seeing some loopholes, and I see more of an opportunity to stand out amongst my competition to acquire more clients. So and, it's, and that's, so that's one part, and then you know next part is uh, you know paying for advertisement. You know I put money out on on Yelp, I put money out on on Google, Facebook. You know you have this, you know I think that's also changed. Uh, significantly in uh, Thumbtack. I put my money out on those things to get leads. And, you know, as I said, you know, in the, in the 2013 mantra, as far as uh, walking out, walk out by faith, not by sight, you know, I, you know, I'm very tight gripped with my, my money situation. I had to really just let go in the sense of put some money down here to see if money would come back. And so it's, it's, you know, it's trying to figure those things out. Making a, a good investment. So I got to ask you, how do you stay relevant? Like, do you attend conferences? Or are you, is it the conversations that you're having with your peers? Or, mm-hmm. you know, like, how do you stay relevant in the industry that's consistently changing? You know, I constantly look on YouTube and then we all look at um, people's profiles um, to to see things that's going on. I, I've been going to conferences since 2004. I, I go to NAB, National Association of Broadcasters, in Vegas is one of the biggest conference for anybody who's trying to get in the you know video production business you know it's, it's one of those things that uh it wasn't you know it was a dream of mine when i first went out there in 2000 i think i think 2004 or 2005 when i first went out there i went there and just pretty much maxed my credit card out uh to get out there with the plane and hotels and stuff like that and um you know my dream was to bring a team out there and i was able to do that and i'm able to consistently do it so it's you know it's one of those things that you know, i don't know if my guys know um, you know, when they go out there with me, it's it's one of those things that it's a dream being fulfilled that I'm able to, you know, bring others out there to also enhance their production skills. Um Okay. So let me ask you this. When you're at the conference, how important is uh is networking with people in your actual industry? I know that oftentimes you could be seen as competition, but are you guys I mean, does do collaborations and things like that come from it? I'm curious because I'm not in your industry. Mm-hmm. So, you know, every industry operates differently. So um, 
So, I mean, at the conferences, it's just one of those things that you get to really see the new stuff that's coming out. Um, I think that what hurts people in this industry is that it's very easy to stay the same. And I kind of almost catch myself sometimes in that same feeling where it's hard to keep changing and reinventing yourself. Once you start your habits and stuff starting to work, it's hard to get out of those habits to to create and do something new. Um, so I really try to go to the conference and, and, and really try to assess the type of products that's out there. What can, you know, A, save me money and make me money at the same time um, and make the work better? Mm. So, um, and, you know, the, and that's what made this, you know, industry change significantly is because now, you know, you don't need the hundred thousand dollar studio to get your video content out there. Like how do you need it almost about 10, 15 years ago? Mm. So, I mean, okay. My next question to you is, is you have a staff of seven people. What are the, what are some of the most important aspects in actually, uh, I guess, keeping your ha- staff happy and productive and making sure that you guys has, have a good, uh, a good jail as a team. Uh, one the first thing is, is making sure they're getting paid. I think that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the one. payroll yeah, again, right? No, yes, yeah, number one. Um, uh, you know, number two. I, you know, I really tried to uh, listen instead of more talking. Um, I try to you know listen and, and trust them. No, that's probably one of the hardest things is trust them, trust their expertise. Because I think what stops a lot of entrepreneurs from an entrepreneur who's working in their business instead of working outside of their business. On their business. On their business. Um, is that you have to have trust for the people that you want to bring in. And you need to calculate in your you know your mind as far as the person that's working there, are they producing enough to, you know, you know, to pay for themselves slash pay for whatever equipment that's there, slash office and slash all the other stuff that needs to be paid for. So um you really need to just focus on that part of it, but then trust that they are going to do right by you, right by the company. And then, uh, you know, I try to check in just to make sure that everybody's, uh, you know, happy. I try to make sure that um, they have an agenda. You know, it's one of those things that I understand that, I definitely understand that, you know, it's, it's my business and, it's, and, you know, it's not there. So I wouldn't expect them to work as hard as I do. Mm-hmm. Um, but the effort that gets put in is amazing because I, I feel like uh, I feel like we be having some tight corners, uh, with, you know, with circumstances, and, and the the team really puts through. And I and I you know I try to be the role model. I think that's important that whoever the leader is the role model. Um, you know, that says one of those things that if um, something happens where you ha- who has to go in the mud pit, the mud fire pit first. You know, it's going to be me. I already you know so, absolutely. So I try to uh, you know I've always been inspired by leaders. You know, sometimes you have some people that says, oh, you got to go uh, move this table and you have to go throw this out in the garbage. And then, you know, they're over there talking to their friends. I always respect the leaders who were moving the table, you know, who was over there helping get the job done a little bit faster instead of just standing there and watching you. Um, so, you know, that's that's what I try to be as a leader, the person who's in the in the, you know, in the trenches with you. OK. So in the trenches, so I have to ask you, you know, uh, what's next for Transcendent Enterprise? What's next for Transcendent? Um, so working on a new website, that's kind of the short term. Uh, I'm trying to really create the routine to do get that done. Uh, you know, next, I, you know, I want to get office, put office in the West Coast. Okay. Um, I think, as I said, you know, with the team that's there, I think everybody's stable enough. It's just, you know checking some things off and, and more nurturing and managing some parts that I think they could run everything here. So um, you could actually spend a lot of your time on the West Coast. So uh, spend my, the West yeah, Coast spend, yeah, spend some time on the West Coast expanding you know, as far as taking my business model out there and, and seeing if we could uh, go to the next level. Wow. Um, uh, I, you know, I, I still want to, I just one of those things that we've done, we're doing a couple of things right now. As I said, we have a, a pretty much a, um, Kind of more of a docu series that we have on YouTube okay. with uh, you know a mentor slash friend of mine who ha- you know he's one of the few African Americans who have a cultivation a marijuana cultivation in Las Vegas, and we have a, a docu series out there that I, I film with I film with him documenting his whole experience of creating this, um, no not create I mean you know building his business his, his marijuana cultivation business, uh, so I you know I want to continue to kind of put more stories out there like that. I kind of want to, you know, do some 
you know, very unique things. I want, you know, build a, you know, a very healthy, unique culture. Two things that you would tell somebody who's looking to uh, build a business similar to yours. Do you have any advice for them? Two things that somebody's building a business similar to mine uh, or is trying to take theirs to the to the next level. Any other jewels that you have? Definitely get your SEO game up. Produce great work. Make sure your work stands out amongst the competition. How do you do that? Uh, you got to stay the craft. There's lots of tutorials. You got to play with the equipment. You got to figure out how can you make that thing sing, pretty much. <laughs> make that thing sing. Not sing, sing. Sing. Oh, okay. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Okay, so uh, where can people find out uh, more about Transcendent Enterprise if they want to use your services or want to reach out? You can reach out to the website is uh, transcendententerprise.com, which sometimes is a mouthful for a couple of people. So we have t hyphen enter t hyphen e n t e r dot com. Uh, you can reach us on Instagram. Uh, we, I constantly check that Transcendent E N T. Uh, we're also on Facebook. So you can reach out on both of those platforms. You can go to you know, say Instagram, kind of see all the latest projects and stuff that we do okay. uh, from there. Awesome. And last question, what's been the best part of creating your life so far? The best part about creating my life? I mean, I look forward to waking up in the morning. It might sound a little simple, but it, or I don't know, but it's, you know, as I said, for me to wake up and know that I got something to do. I got, I got, I got to make something happen. Okay. So uh, waking up with that ambition. Waking up with the ambition. Drive. Drive. Drive and driven. Chris, man, I want to thank you for being here on the Create Your Life series. It has been uh, more than a pleasure to have you here. We've had this wonderful opportunity to have Christopher Alvarez here, uh, CEO of Transcendent Enterprise. And ladies and gentlemen, as always, I want to remind you that you can definitely uh, go onto our Instagram page at CYL Series and leave us a message during the show if you have any questions for our guest or actually send an email to uh, admin at LegacyThinkingLabs.com. We'd be happy to answer any questions that you have or any hacks. And it seems that we've actually uh, had a, another question come in at the last minute. And so I wanted to make sure that we could come in and uh, and answer it for you. Somebody asked, does Christopher Alvarez, does he have any hacks for those who are looking to start their... Um, their video production company. So Chris, I want to ask you that and uh, please elaborate and tell if you do have any. So yeah, so I, I would advise if somebody's starting a camera, I mean, their video production company, um, you know, you can pretty much start with your iPhone. Um, you know, I really think having an iPhone and something called a, a H4N, which I think you could get from eBay for a little bit under $300. Um, if you have that and a computer with some software, I'm not going to say go and uh, find bootleg software. You know, you should pay for it, but you got to do what you got to do. But I'm not going to say go find bootleg software. Okay. But uh, so, you know, if you have those three things, which you could get in a matter of, you know, an hour, you know, you already have, you know, a production company. So now the direction is understanding what do you want to record to so you can start to earn a living. Uh, you can record yourself. I would advise if you're going to record yourself and start a vlog, I would advise you to pretty much vlog every day because um, that's the only way you're going to build traction um, and just make sure your story is solid. If you want to become a company where you're doing work with clients like me, um, you need to probably do work for, on the, for the cheap for a long time um, to build up a way to start buying equipment to start competing with companies. And then once you are able to start building that, once you have a great client base, start investing in your company and start building it out to eventually grow it out. Okay. Well, man, thank you for those hacks. And uh, I thank you to our listeners for asking that question. So I want to remind you, beautiful people, we are here every Sunday, 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. This is the Create Your Life series. And again, I am Kevin Brown. Happy to see you. Happy to be here. Chris Alvarez, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.